The Swedish job. It's pretty vague. Sundance Rejects. Hmm. I do love well, these some internet historians. The following is a true story. Stockholm, December 22nd, 2000. Gentlemen, the Swedish National Museum. 90,000 square feet of priceless artwork. Only two roads in and out. The police will be ready. Walking away with the goods won't be easy. Smash and grab job, huh? Not quite. First things first. I do love at exactly heists. At exactly 4.55 p.m., five minutes before the museum closes, we blow up two cars outside the Grand Hotel and the Strand. There's some actual Ocean's Naturally, Eleven shit. fire trucks and police will be dispatched. What about the guards in the building? Only one. And he'll be busy ushering everyone to leave. Now, we get ourselves armed and approach. Basically, we some Meanwhile, flare. two of us are already inside waiting for the signal. Once you hear those explosions, put on your balaclavas and take out guns. Take out! They call it back up! Get on the floor! Don't move! So the standard disarm the guards and get everyone on the floor. That's right. Then one of you stay in the lobby while the other two make your way It's actually Wang. Yeah, I know it was. Now remember, gentlemen. No browsing. We're here for three paintings in particular. Conversation with the Who's gonna buy these though? It's a Parisian stupid thing to steal. And a self-portrait by Rembrandt. Art is just money yeah, laundering. We crack the safe. Who are you gonna sell it to? Safe. No security cameras or alarms either. Wire cutters are all we need. <laughs> Amateurs. We bag the goods and bust out the front door. And we're just supposed to walk out of there with the three paintings and not get stopped? Yep. Won't take the police long to catch up. That's what I'm counting on. A little surprise, I Oh, he's got those ninja things. The little there, spike it's traps. Walk to the docks where we've got a boat ready. We skim around the waterfront and down the Cal -trops, line thank canals you. of Stockholm and make a beeline for Melar Lake. Then we dock in a quiet area and make it on foot back to the road. Let me guess, you already have a car waiting. Of course. Mm -hmm. We drive back to the city, get back to HQ, paintings in hand. And congratulations, boys. We've just robbed the Swedish National Museum for an estimated $30 million. If that sells to anybody, which I That's really don't exactly think it ever would. How all of it played out. The next day. The police had cleaned up the torched cars, and they were questioning staff, getting any clues they could about the suspects. They didn't have any faces. They didn't have any shady DNA rich evidence. people will buy. It was a I just highly job, doubt it. And there was very little. To shady go on. rich people don't really buy art for the sake of buying art. It's a money laundering. Until someone came forward. A witness. An old man. <laughs> I I was working on the river when I saw three lads speed off Thanks to reset out of the area Angelax. in the boat. Did you get a good look at him? I, you know, but they seemed suspicious, so I followed him. Followed him right <laughs> through the canals into the Malar. I, and right <laughs> to the shore where they parked their vessel and abandoned it. <coughs> it's very sweet. Can you show us where on the map? I... So the police sent out a couple of cars and found the boat. Here it is. No three side curai. No paintings, detective. Damn. What about the registration? Nothing, sir. Well, thanks, Timbo. I guess the only thing we can do is put out a picture of the boat and ask the public for help. So they published pictures of the boat in the local newspaper and asked people to come forward with information. The next day. Oh, that's my boat. The boat owner paid the police a visit. I'm How convenient. Mark, and that's my boat. What happened? We'll ask the questions. Hey, is there well, some do I what just I want? sold the thing last week to three chaps who looked a bit suspect. Did you get their names? Afraid not, sorry. Although, when I sold the boat to them, they asked if they could use my trailer to transport it. And? 
Well, I said yes, but only if they gave me their phone number for safety. Well, have you still got it? Yep, here it is. I wrote it on the back of the receipt. And it seems pretty easy. They've got him. Reveled for the thieves, because despite all of this Ocean's Eleven style bullshit, they had used their real phone number. Amateurs. So police looked up the number and everyone they had called. We've got a match. The number was connected to a gang of petty thieves. They were not big time criminals. They had done small stuff like car thefts, drug peddling, and so on. That's they still pretty impressive. Criminal masterminds. This thread of evidence led to two men serving sentences in a minimum security prison 10 miles from Stockholm. A Russian named Alexander Petrov and a Swedish national named Stefan Nordstrom. But wait, these men were behind bars. They have an airtight alibi. Right? Well, turns out they are considered low-risk prisoners, which means they are allowed weekend furloughs. What? Essentially, they're just doing jail as a day job. What the fuck? while the boy Petrov had returned from his weekend away, Nordstrom had not. So police what? went to work searching Nordstrom's empty cell. No fucking way. Are you serious? Like, so in Sweden, when you're a low-risk prisoner, they just let you go home on the weekends? So it's literally just like being in school again. What was it called? A prison furlough? Oh my god. Wow. Yeah, it's a real thing. That is crazy. Well, well you know, it is what it is, I guess. Thanks to the resub, Hemi. Lo and behold, Nordstrom had been doing a bit of light reading collections of newspaper clippings from past art heists. Very subtle. On top of that, Nordstrom had reportedly been visiting a bunch of auction houses in the area. They were clearly the painting bandits. Now, here's the thing about art thievery. It's a difficult game. Unlike jewelry or other valuable goods, you can't just offload these anywhere. You need a buyer who has a lot of cash mm -hmm. and is willing to take a huge risk themselves. Possession of stolen property is a crime and they wouldn't be allowed to keep the paintings if word ever got out. So essentially, they had $30 million in unsellable goods. I, that's exactly what I was fucking saying and chat was just going off of what they see in video games. It is not easy to sell so, fucking stolen art. Oh. We could sell it to a billionaire in China. Okay, do you know any? Thanks to the resub, Hypnotoad no. and McLovin. Yeah, I thought so. So shut the fuck up and think of something better. Why don't we just ransom it back to the museum? That's not the worst idea in the world. December 28th, 2000. Six days after the robbery, Petrov's lawyer approaches the police station. Hello. Yes, hello. I am here on behalf of my client and acting as an intermediary. We have your paintings. Go on. I am here to negotiate it safely to your return for a modest sum. Uh-huh. Interesting tact. This is, of course, completely illegal. Lawyers <laughs> can't just negotiate ransoms for their clients. Until you now. You have the paintings? Right here. The attorney then reveals... Is this the worst lawyer of all time? Photos ...of the stolen art, complete with that day's newspaper. Right. So who are these clients of yours? Can't say. Lawyer, client, confidentiality, and all that. Right. Well... Let me just have a chat with my supervisor. The police feigned interest, 
but there was no way they were going to pay a ransom when they could simply catch them. Obviously. So instead, Fucking obviously. They placed a surveillance team on Petrov for the next time he met with his attorney. A couple of days later, that meeting took place. And surprise, surprise, they're not alone. Nordstrom had turned up as well. Oh. Wait for it. See you soon. Take care. Now, now, now. Go, go, go. The police moved in on Nordstrom. What the? No, I'm innocent. Save it for the judge. Ah, what do we have here? Those aren't mine. In a moment of sheer genius, Nordstrom had decided to bring with him a bag filled with Polaroids of the stolen paintings. Is this how you get your kicks? Oh, that'd be sick. Get these to the lab. Later, the lab found Petrov's fingerprints all over the Polaroids. With this evidence, they obtained a warrant to raid a cellar that the gang frequented. Look everywhere. They may have left the subtle list of clues. Anything that can even give us a scrap of... Detective? Here's a date book literally showing all of the details of the heist, including all of the co-conspirators. Nice work, Detective. Thanks, Detective. Hey, do you know what time it is? These guys uh, are good. Is it? It's time for a montage. Well, we got the bad guys. But there was a problem. They hadn't recovered any of the paintings. They had searched the cellar, Please top some dead the, bottom, pixels. the homes of the criminals. They had questioned all of them. And no one was giving up the goods. It's in a trash can. Yeah. If there's any justice, they just threw them away. What is it, honey? Is it the paintings again? Thanks to the resub, Soggy. And mustard. I just can't stop thinking about it. They're out there somewhere. Just come back to bed. No. I think I'll go for a walk. Next to Risa Brack. <clears throat> Couldn't sleep either. No time. Rumors are circulating that Renoir's The Conversation is going up for sale. Count me in, detective. I just have to get suited. Please, the prime Rakan. You're going to need something a little less official. We're going undercover. Ad time. Okay, quick hypothetical. Let's say you were single, and I also. So how to are be there single, twelve people we associated with together, that? Right, and then you said, "Thanks, oh, Risa." Let's, let's go Dave on Verm. this website. Would you let me use NordVPN? Okay, no, no I'm, not, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not being, no, I'm not being serious. Although, okay. You're drowning, right? And Help move the I paintings. You, and you don't yeah, I suppose so. Just all and charges, like, accessories. Oh no, I have to give you mouth to mouth or you'll die, right? You'll die. And I don't know how. And I want to Google it. But I'm worried about my data falling into the wrong hands. Could I use NordVPN then for 70% off? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Uh, okay, we're in the Amazon forest and we're like walking together. But not, not too close, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and snake bites you. Oh my god. Uh, and I have to suck out the poison. But then I remember watching this documentary, right? And it was on like snake bites and stuff. And I'm gonna watch it again and I'm gonna save your life. Frozen and oh my god, it's region locked. Do you mind if I slipped in a little Nord VPN? Not even for 70% off? 
No, nah, I'm, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing. Could you imagine though if I use NordVPN right now, like for real? No, nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna use it right now. I'm not. I'm not. It's it's, it's dumb. But like, no one's around. If I was to Thank use Prime, NordVPN, no one's gonna know. No wait, where are you going? I mean, look, wait, wait, wait. NordVPN lets you use six devices on one account. You can use one of mine. Your boyfriend won't know. Like, like watch this. I just type in nordvpn.com slash incognito and I get sick. He puts more efforts into the ads than most into a whole video. I can treat you better and keep your data safe with NordVPN. Thanks, the resub, Isa. Oh my god. Wouldn't have happened if you got NordVPN. Add over. Here's your tier one, Dirty Dan. Swedish police set up an undercover agent to infiltrate the ring and to buy the Renoir. The detective would be posing as a representative for an interested buyer nice. who was standing by. But they'd need confirmation that the painting was the real deal. That's him. Art thief? Yes! Are you the buyer? That's me. I represent a very wealthy and very interested client. But of course, before we can start negotiating, I need to know that we're talking about the real deal. All right, mate. Come with me. The undercover agent followed one of the men into the bathroom. Okay. What do you think? That's... that's quite something. Come on! My client will be very pleased. Okay, okay, okay. What do you say to 200k? <laughs> that sounds acceptable. Uh, in, in fact, it's quite low. My rich buyer probably would have paid a lot more, even. Whoa! <laughs> Fantastic! Yes! Hey, get in! They both washed their hands and exited the cafe. Seconds later, police came screeching around the corner, sirens blazing. Sorry, fellas. It was me the whole time. <gasps> oh? Oh, right. We've never met before. Well, book and board. Thanks for three gifts of board. Appreciate it, man. You fucking mug! I st you. I'm still lost on how the fucking art ended up in his hands. They had done it. Partially. They had retrieved one of Because they weren't able to sell it. And they right? had a bunch of new leads. The cops rounded up even more members of the gang, among them Alexander Sasha Lindgren and an Iraqi Baha Kadhum, as well as three of them. Thanks, Prime Jones. Now, remember these lads, we'll be coming back to them. But even though they rounded up all these guys, only one man would have charged. So they just gave it to people to hold. Stick. Okay. The rest walked. And there were still two pieces of art out there. Thanks to the Prime Victus. Mm. Los Angeles. Four and a half years later. Downtown LA. Thanks like to the of this rally. The FBI are working on a routine case. It's a drug bust with some Bulgarians. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Until they heard something unusual. Yeah, so we've got Renoir's young Parisian for sale. Is that code for something? Are they human trafficking? Chief, I believe it's that painting that was stolen from the Swedish National Museum a few years back. How would anyone remember that? Yeah, we want to get it out. By name. Sounds like it's going to be on the move soon. No one's going to take out credit. <laughs> That'd be for tricycle. Damn it. Infallible. Pillars of competence. So they ramped up surveillance. The Bureau intercepted a call from one Where's of the, the prime higher ups. Boris Kostov. It's time for a good old fashioned stakeout. The FBI waited outside Kostov's home until they saw him load up a small painting-sized package into his car's trunk. Yeah, yeah, we got it. I told him to be careful. Should be eight pairs of rips. We're going in. Get down, get down, get the fuck down. The FBI swarmed. Kostov surrendered. We've got it, Captain. Ha <laughs> ha, the big prize. FBI wins again. So they opened the bag and found... Dry cleaning. Oh shit! Yes, really? Shit. Rest him anyway, boys. Outsmarted. So they pull Kostov in. Thanks to give sub Hooters. Okay, I'll be good cop, and you also be the good cop, because people like it when you're nice. Good thinking, Captain. Look, here's the thing. 
You surprised us with the laundry. Those whites. Very white, by the way. I'd like to know who you use. But the thing is, we've been tailing you for months, and we know about the drugs. And that's the bigger deal anyway. Oh yeah, you got any evidence? Yeah, all of this. The overwhelming amount of evidence means Kostov is definitely going to be found guilty. Thanks, and that means possibly 30 years Ooh. in prison. At his age, this is effectively a life sentence. In a corner, Kostov broke. Yeah, all right. All right, I know where your paintings are. I want to deal. Kostov agreed to assist the police. Good choice. Now take us to the paintings. Kostov led the police to a local pawn shop. Down here. As they entered the basement, Kostov pointed to an art folio leaning against the wall, wrapped in towels and a grocery bag. They unraveled it, and surely enough, it was the young Parisian, and in good condition too. Bingo. Two out of three. The only one remaining was the Rembrandt. However, with Kostov as an asset, uh, authorities now had a way to find it. Uh, <laughs> Give me the other painting, Kostov. I don't... But I... Yeah, okay, I got contacts in Sweden. Wait, no, that one was correct. Say that again. I know people in Sweden who know where it is. So it's not here in LA? No, it's back in Stockholm. How the fuck did it end up in LA? How big was their gang? Now how do we know you're telling the truth? Sorry, it's a reflex. That's okay. Because... Yes? Because... Yeah? Because the person who has it... <gasps> yes? ...is my own son. Whoa. Alexander Sasha Lindgren. Oh. My. God. I know, right? Kostov was willing to incriminate his own son to avoid jail time. Yeah, I would too if I was in, in that situation. Back to Sweden. Fuck, just take my kid uh, and the art. The art sucks anyway, fuck. In Stockholm, the son, Lindgren, was being pressured by his associates, Baha and Dea Kadhom. Those are the guys from before, by the way. To sell off the Rembrandt. It's been almost five years, dude. Are you gonna sell this thing or not? Well, I do enjoy looking at it, but I suppose you're right. The FBI makes a call. Sweden, my man, I got a tip for you. I can't understand you. Yeah, speak, speak English. Put someone on the line who does. Okay, thanks. Hello? Hello? English? Hello? Okay, cool. We have a tip for you. The FBI tells Swedish authorities to put surveillance on Lindgren and the Cadhams. Lindgren, unaware that his father had betrayed him, would be caught up in the sting. The stage was set. But if they were going to pull three sub race, they would need to call in their top dog. Part scholar, part daredevil. <laughs> Alright, I have no idea why he's written this way in all the articles, <laughs> but we're going to go with it. Uh, this guy, he scheme. means business. The defender of Dali. The guardian of Goya, half scholar, half daredevil, and 100% man. With an alignment of chaotic good, he'll teach you about the classics, then he'll teach you to make love. Robert K. Whitman. THE Robert Whitman? Exit Prime Grin. Part 5. Copenhagen. September 15th, 2005. The meeting Sleep well. had been arranged. Lebez. The Cadham brothers are on a train from Stockholm, secretly followed by police the whole way. And as they sit in their seats, in the hand of one of the brothers is held a small painting-sized parcel. Police could have arrested them then. And Dry then. cleaning again. They would have had the brothers red-handed. But that wouldn't be enough. It would be a simple possession of stolen goods charge, and the police wanted to catch them in the act of selling the painting. So they stood by. Kostov and Whitman <clears throat> arrived at the Skandik Hotel. The Cadhams and Lindgren True, made Mike. their way too. Oh, hello. Hey guys. They said in Swedish. Do you guys want to do the deal now or grab lunch first? No, let's just get this over with. Okay, come with me. Come on, son. Let's throw the old football around. But that. Come on, son. Look, Dad, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm proud of you. So they let the dad go to this? <laughs> Whitman led Cato. Man, that dad did not want to go to jail at all. Good, good lord. I hope you like Swedish Corona. Mmm, nice. I'm gonna have to count it, though. No problem. Whitman knew he had it. 
He could see the look in Cadhoom's eyes as he greedily counted the money. I threw some canned milk. So, uh, you guys had like a good trip out? Mm hmm. See any, uh, good movies lately? You know, there's a delightful restaurant down. It's very hard to count when you keep talking. I want to look up Robert K. Whitman now. All right, and that's 200,000. Amazing. Five what kind of stunts is he known for? Seeing all of his buddies go to jail. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> well, sorry to interrupt, but you need to see Robert K. Whitman. It stands for Robert King Whitman. And he was a special agent. I don't know why he's written as a part-time daredevil, but he does. He looks like he's fucking all business. What a fucking man. And then here he is with a giant sniper rifle, I guess. Probably after just hunting a rare elephant to extinction. Alright, def definitely not what I pictured with the part-time secret agent, part-time daredevil. Let me see what kind of stunts he did. Robert Whit Maniac. Oh, Robert Whitman Inc. Misread that. A con man's smile and a daredevil's nerves. So he's not actually a fucking daredevil. God damn it. Alright. Grand. It would all be worth it. Thanks the reset. It would be Wimble over. in the prime well, we got MC. Baha then stood up and left the room with the cash. Hey, wait! Baha went back down the lobby and was making his way to the exit. Wait, what's happening? Baha walked right out the front door of the hotel without saying much of anything. What the hell's going on? Has the deal sound? Uh, get him! Is our cover being blown? Is this a cross? Police on standby were starting to get nervous. But Whitman was staying cool. Seconds passed. Just hold steady. Minutes passed. Thanks, Risa Bully Stay Beef. Cool. They're getting away. Stay cool. Hope and everything's alright, Beef. They came back with a different bag in hand. Oh! It turns out the bag they had before dry was cleaning. A decoy. Oh. They were using it to see if any cops would be drawn out. Now that the deal seems solid, they brought the real thing. Got him. Cadham returns to the room, and Whitman accepts wow. the painting. Pretty smart That's plan. The real deal. Danish SWAT is standing by and ready to swoop. Whitman spoke the code words necessary to launch their raid on the room. Would you like an orange? Uh, excuse me? My favorite color is orange! Thanks for some Tostitos and Bilbo. Uh, okay. I mean, orange, you glad? I said orange? Uh, anyway, thanks for the money, but, uh, we gotta go. No, wait, let me arrange you a cab. That's okay, we'll walk. The SWAT team burst into the room as Whitman jumped into the bathroom. Collecting <laughs> the painting to his chest. He the jumps out the window and parachutes away, just subject. taking the painting for himself. The of Baha Khadim, his brother Dia, and the betrayed Lindgren went off without a hitch. Whitman emerged from the bathroom Dira? victorious. Women swooned, men swooned, I am swooning. Jesus, what a man. Looks like you're caught by the police. Yes, well done, Whitman. And we would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for your sly doggery. Thank you. Now, take him away, boys. Whitman held the painting aloft. It was busted over his knee. He returned it I'm to Robert the Whitman, Canada. baby. And the timing was perfect. Because in just a few days, they would be exhibiting a show on Rembrandt anyway. And they not only had him back, but a story to go along with it. The painting was These unveiled as a perky and tier one mama this time papa. behind glass, and with a specially assigned security guard standing by its side. So the Cadham brothers and Alexander Lindgren were convicted of receiving stolen goods. However, their sentences were overturned by a Swedish appeals court ruling that they had been provoked into the crime. What? Well, but what? For our hero, what? Well, Whitman hung up his. What cap, do you have to do to go like go to jail in Sweden? 
again the end oh my god ha jail in sweden sounds like almost pleasant like if you're financially down on your luck just commit a crime in sweden you get meals and you get to go home on the weekends and you apparently have to work really hard even to get that to go to jail it is quite literally like a hotel that's nuts what was it again prison furlough what they call it where they just let prisoners go home every weekend thanks the reason of yoshi Yeah, I mean, maybe that's good, though. Like, maybe those guys never go on to commit another crime ever. And it's just a net positive. Now you just got three dudes that have a cool story to tell, and now they're total upstanding citizens. I, I couldn't tell you. I All I can tell you is, if that was in the U.S., you would have fucking chaos. It would literally be the purge. If you just let prisoners go home every weekend, they would just start going wild. I don't think it would work here. But maybe they do. Make sure to smash that like button and thumbs up, ring the bell, tell your mom I said hi. Yeah, that's about it. See ya.